gang, thanks for tuning back in to Project One UZ. Today we're starting a new series on developing our own low buck M90 intercooled supercharger manifold for One UZ. So this is it here, uh, we'll get into it. So here's my current M90 supercharger set up on the One UZ. So as you can see there, that's the Eaton M90 off the L67 Holden Commodore. Uh, I've made my own adapter manifold basically that replaces the top intake manifold on the 1UZ and it bolts to the stock lower half. Uh, it is made out of 10mm aluminium plate on the top box section there. The flange plate that the supercharger mounts to is made out of 6mm steel. Uh, we've got our riser tubes there, they're 45mm from memory. And then 10mm plates on the bottom that bolt to the stock lower intake manifold. Uh, has worked great. Now it's been a really good thing. Um, no issues with belt slip or alignment or anything. I did a pretty well, did a pretty good job aligning all up. Um, but yeah, the one problem that this whole setup has had is the issue that everybody comes across with these things on one UZ is that intake temp gets up pretty hard. Um, last tack day, I decided that I was going to give it a bit of a test. Uh, at Matsuri, they've got a skid pan, so wet skid pan. Decided that I was going to take the car out there, they do three minute runs and just leave it in first gear and basically ride limiter for three minutes and see how hot it got. Uh, got up to a little bit over 120 degrees Celsius, so fairly cooking. Um, ideally, that's not what you want. Uh, the engine ran safe because I have a Haltech Elite 2000 with correction maps in it, so it pulls ignition timing as the intake temps go up. Um, yeah, so I didn't have any pinging or experience detonation, which is good. But ideally, you know, no one wants to have intake temps that high. So we left there. We were happy with how the car performed, but really wanted to do something about those intake temps. So, yeah, had a bit of a search on the internet and found a few options. Uh, first one I considered was water methanol injection. Um, many benefits. Works great. The one issue I basically couldn't get past was I don't want to have to keep a stock of methanol laying around or have ready access to it whenever I want to do a track day, burnout day or anything like that. Um, yeah, so that sort of ruled that one out for me. Uh, the next option was Mace themselves. They make a adapter manifold that is a air to air in a cooler setup. Um, it basically would replace this section here uh, on the Commodores anyway. And supercharger blows into a box which has a two and a half inch from memory uh, port on it that you basically feed your intake piping out into the front of the car, air to air intercooler out the front, and then it feeds back along into the bottom half of their box and then feeds into the heads. Uh, most likely works great, but not very appealing in my eyes. Um, I didn't really want to go down that route. So from there, next step is water the air intercooling. Um, if you follow me Facebook and me Instagram, you probably saw that I was playing around with a water to air intercooler set up to fit inside this manifold. It mounted to the bottom side of that mild steel plate there. Um, just really wasn't happy with how it turned out basically. It wasn't comfortable running it on the car for any length of time really. Um, this is it here. So it's a Davies Crag transmission cooler basically. It's 19 millimeters thick. Um, it's sort of was replicating Mace themselves make a, they call it their mini blizzard kit and it uses a 19 millimeter core, looks identical to that basically but uh, encapsulated in like a composite material basically. Um, would probably work fine on lower boost levels but I mean I'm running 10 psi on this thing and as I said 120 degree intake temps. Um, Figured it probably just wasn't going to do the job and clearance with fitting coming in and out of here just really wasn't happy with how that was working. So decided to abandon that idea. So the next idea from that was this bad boy here. So this is a generic water to air in a cooler off of eBay. Uh, 100, meter, 100 millimeter dimension that way and that way. So quite a substantial jump up from the little 19 mil core, that's for sure. Uh, they're a pretty basic setup, so they've got end tanks welded on them, so you would run your intake piping into there and out of there. Uh, we're not going to be doing any of that because, as I said, I don't really find that too appealing. So the plan with this is actually cut the tanks off through there all the way around, 
Same on the other side, so we're just left with Pecora in the center. In the center. Water goes in one side and out the other. And from there, I'm gonna be designing a version two manifold for me car, basically. Um, I've got CNC machines, so I'm gonna do my own drawings and cut all my own plates out. Uh, plan will be same dimensions as this, hopefully, but we'll have a box that comes up from the bottom here, same sort of T section to come out to meet the flange for the M90. But this is currently about five inches tall, so 125 millimeters tall. Uh, this is 100, so it might end up being slightly taller than that, but the plan will be to have basically a flange plate that meets somewhere in the middle here, and then that plate will be welded to the perimeter of the intercooler, so it will sit inside the manifold, and the lines will basically feed to the back of the manifold and exit there. Uh, we'll be using speed flow lines and AN fittings to do on that, most likely. And yeah, from there, currently running intake temperature out of the back of that manifold there through that little black plug. Um, I want to be running too. I want to be able to measure both pre-intercooler and post-intercooler temperatures and see what kind of efficiency it is and what our temperature drop is. Um, yeah, so that's the goal with this. Hopefully you learn something out of it and you do too. So the next video will be most likely doing all the CAD drawings. So we do a bit of a preview what the manifold is going to look like and then start cutting some plates out on the CNC machine. And then from there, it'll be a lot of videos just on the TIG, welding stuff together. So thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you can. It really helps with my motivation basically to keep making these videos. So yeah, if you could do that, that'd be awesome. So thanks for that and we'll catch you next time.